Thursday, June 3rd, 2021, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at derivatives. Uh, derivatives are, for me, the Achilles heel of the whole system, not only financial, but the whole economy. And uh, many of you are probably familiar with derivatives, and many or the majority of people aren't. They don't realize uh, the uh, danger that der derivatives uh, pose to the system, to the economy. My background is in derivatives. Uh, I was a futures and options broker for over 20 years in the city of London. And uh, that's a kind of derivative. It's not the biggest kind of derivative. Uh, futures and options are regulated. There's another type of derivatives, uh, which is called OTC or over-the-counter derivatives. Those are not regulated. And, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. I've spoken a lot about this uh, in the past. I even have a playlist called Derivatives File. It, it's got 19 videos in it. And I've been speaking about this since the beginning of the channel. And uh, yes, uh, before I start, though, yes, I saw the news about Fauci and uh, the emails, the Freedom of Information. And uh, just wanted to show you something I bought last year. So this T-shirt. So that's how I feel about Fauci and the other guy, right? So if you're interested in this t-shirt, you can get it uh, on Infowars.com, or at least you could get it last year. It's not in my Teespring store. Uh, in my Teespring store, you can find this, though, uh, Billy's uh, Silver Squeeze mug. It's got Billy and the silver back on it and a few silver coins and bars. So just take a sip of my coffee. So, yeah, derivatives. So what are derivatives? <laughs> Basically, there are side bets on underlying uh, assets or securities. Um, and uh, I really recommend, and I have recommended already many times, that you watch The Big Short. Uh, it, it's a great movie about the OA crisis. And it's got everything to do with derivatives, especially the over-the-counter uh, version. Uh, the problem with derivatives, uh, there's a few problems. Let's go over them. Uh, the first one I, I would say is that uh, it's kept off the uh, counterparties that trade it or hold it off their balance sheet, mainly because, uh, yes, <laughs> it's a bet. So it's not on the balance sheet. So I, I think that is a problem because then the accountants, regulators, auditors can't really see it. It's something that can pop up. The second, and I would say this is the most important one really, is that uh, they're leveraged. So you can bet on a, a million dollars worth of gold, for example, and only put down like a... Uh, fifty thousand fifty thousand uh, dollars so yes it's leveraged so if the underlying security uh, and you can bet on anything these days uh, originally derivatives were actually not a bad thing uh, they were more associated with agricultural uh, goods uh, with commodities because farmers and producers uh, wanted to lock in or hedge prices uh, so in advance, so they could plan plan ahead. So the uh, commodities uh, market developed, especially in Chicago, the Chicago Board of Trade, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, I think the Minneapolis Exchange as well. So they're all related to commodities, which makes sense. Uh, you want to uh, protect yourself versus uh, natural events. But uh, with the uh, advent of fiat currency, with the advent of the collapse of the Bretton Woods system in 1971, what happened was that currencies became uh, a floating rate. 
there is a lot of volatility in currencies. And when there's volatility in currencies, you get volatility uh, in interest rates, in bonds, in stocks, and everything. So prior to the 1970s, and especially after the 1980s, uh, these financial derivatives mushroomed and became massive. Uh, and uh, that's how it evolved. I personally was involved in these financial derivatives. The uh, major market that I covered were government bond futures like uh, U.S. Treasuries, uh, German bonds. At the time, we had uh, French notion notionals the French government bond. We even traded BTP futures, the Italian government bond. I've traded Swedish government bonds, Spanish. Uh, of course, with the euro, uh, the bond, the German bond has become the benchmark, and that's what's traded, I think, still these days. Uh, JGB, all the government bond futures. And uh, yeah, the leverage is the problem. And what these derivatives are also being used used for not just the exchange traded ones the exchange traded ones are actually uh, pretty well regulated and they're quite public people see uh, who's doing what and what the leverage is but with the over-the-counter uh, how does that work well if I'm a fund manager and I want to bet on the housing market like uh, Michael Barry wanted to do in uh, 2006 or thereabouts, 2005, he just went went to New York and uh, went around the big banks and said, "Can you uh, draw draw up a derivative uh, in order that uh, I will make money if the subprime market collapses?" And they did. It was called a credit default swap. And that's very opaque because it's a, a private agreement between two parties and uh, they can ride it up for as much as they want. And uh, if you notice in that movie, uh, if uh, the price of the security moves, uh, either way, he will get like a credit or a debit. That's the margin uh, that you get paid. But he made a bet in the billions and he only had to put down a fraction of it. And the other problem with the OTC is that the pricing is controlled by these big, big banks. And if it's going against them, they'll they'll hold off. <laughs> you know, we can see already how they manipulate the precious metals market, which is basically a derivative market. It's not real gold and silver either. So um, prior to the uh, 08 crisis, just as the 08 crisis, I guess, uh, started the notional amount. And what's a notional amount? Well, that's not the amount of money that is put uh, to make these bets. It's the amount of money that it, uh, these bets control. That's the notional amount. So if I bet a million dollars that gold is going up and I only need to put 50,000 down, 50,000 is the margin. A million is the notional amount. So I I don't even have to have a million uh, dollars. So, yeah, it was accounted that uh, these bets uh, together, OTC market, uh, exchange traded markets, were over a thousand trillion dollars, so a quadrillion. And, and the problem with these bets, they've become so leveraged, as I said, uh, the, the major uh, market for derivatives are interest rates and bonds. So if you get a lot of volatility, <laughs> uh, you can imagine how this can really hit the fan. And usually the bankers, their excuse is that uh, it doesn't matter with derivatives because there's always uh, the uh, buyer and seller, they net out. But what they don't say is that when things become very volatile, counterparties uh, could fail. <laughs> and when a part counterparty fails, it doesn't matter. It, uh, the net net out doesn't matter because it, it, the, the the counterparty that fails won't be able to pay uh, its side of the deal, and that's what happened with Lehman's. Uh, and uh, they let Lehman collapse. And uh, I remember really well. I was in the city, and I could could see that 
all the major banks were going to collapse. <laughs> they were really desperate. After Lehman, people were saying, oh, it's going to be Morgan Stanley next, Merrill Lynch, then Goldman Sachs, and then others. And then at the end, it would be JP Morgan, the last one to fall. And that's why they had to meet at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. That's why they, they had to bail them out. That's why they had to um, basically lumber you, me, future generations with a huge tax burden. Uh, because that's how they bailed them out. By uh, Uncle Sam wrote the check. We did. Whoever they use in Europe wrote the check. And, and it's been happening ever since. Uh, what they should have done after 08 is done away with these derivatives. But why didn't they do away with it? Well, because it's a gravy train for the bankers. And, and the other thing, unfortunately, it's seeped through into the economy. It, it's called the credit economy. Uh, have you noticed that a lot of people don't own anything already? Uh, they lease cars or they... You know, they have huge mortgages when they buy their house. I mean, I was reading the other day that you can, young people now can even buy things that cost five pounds, a pair of socks or something on installment. Everything is on credit. So that's the other reason why they need to keep interest rates low. <laughs> they, they, they say that uh, deflation is bad for the economy. That's a load of uh, hogwash because what's bad for the economy right now is that uh, they don't want interest rates to go up because it would bring this whole house of cards of deriv derivatives down. And uh, because if you look at uh, in the 19th century, the UK was the empire that ran everything, had the reserve currency. And you look at the uh, Bank of England inflation calculator, which I've done many times, there was no uh, inflation. It was zero for about 100 years from 1814 to 1914. And that didn't cause any problems. So when you hear people say, the other day I saw an article in the FT talking about the inflationary pressures that are building right now. And uh, some of the Keynesian economists that were uh, interviewed for their article said, oh, yeah, it's always good to have 2% inflation uh, because we don't want the economy to fall into def a deflationary spiral. Well, that's rubbish, really. Uh, how can it be bad for the currency to retain its value? Uh, so that's the problem. And that's why derivatives now are at the top of John Exter's inverted pyramid. Everything is derivatives. And the hedge funds, they're one of the biggest culprits. The investment banks as well. And that's why we're going to see a lot more Archegos-type busts uh, happening. Had you ever heard of Archegos before they went bust? No, I hadn't. Uh, 2019 was the same with the repo crisis. We heard that big hedge funds. That should probably be, go, have gone bust like uh, Citadel and also Ray Dalio's fund. There's talk that they were in trouble and that's why the Fed had to save the repo market. And how does that uh, relate to the repo market? Well, because aside from uh, derivatives being side bets, they use the repo market to leverage themselves even more. So it, it's a big mess. Uh, the BIS, the Bank for International Settlements, that's supposed to regulate this, they even changed the accounting system for derivatives to make it look like it's smaller. So they tell you now that it's only like 600 trillion instead of a quadrillion. But I would say that it's a lot more. It's, it's a lot more than in 08. And last year was the same thing. It was another, another derivatives bust. And that's why they had to throw everything at the, you know, the kitchen sink, everything at it. And the same thing is going to happen again. And hopefully <laughs> this time around, they won't be able to do much. And uh, this whole derivative, derivative sector will be wiped out. You know, that's where uh, Wall Street and the city of London, that's where they make their money. Uh, yeah, let's see what happens on June 28th. 
with Basel III. Let's see if this is really going to have an impact on an allocated gold. Because as I've said before, and you look at the uh, extras pyramid, gold and silver are really important to the system. Yes, <laughs> they make it seem like it isn't. But uh, I think when gold and silver start really motoring ahead, it, it's going to point to the death knell of this system. And I think it's a good thing. Yes, they're going to say that it's really bad. There's not going to be any credit. But no, I, I think what's really bad is this system that we've had of leverage, of credit, and greed and speculation. Not that greed and speculation can be eliminated, but it's really been accentuated. So uh, I highly recommend you go into my derivatives file because I probably <laughs> forgot to mention a few things here, but uh, there's plenty of material there uh, going back years. So this video will be added to the file. So you're going to have 20 videos there. So with that, let's look at where the markets are this morning. It's 7.30 a.m. The reason Billy and I are getting up earlier is because uh, the guys who are painting, painting the house, they're having to come really early because it's getting really hot and they need to get the paint on before it gets hot. Um, so that's why. Uh, we've got spot gold, 1898.50. It's down just under $10. The high has been 1911 and the low 1897.50. We've bashed silver down as well, spot silver. Uh, we're down 25 cents for no reason really whatsoever, down about a percent at 27.88. Uh, uh, the Dow futures down 15 points. SP. Is really uh, unchanged the Nasdaq uh, is unchanged as well so fairly quiet the uh, stock markets so as I said there's no reason really for gold and silver being down except that the, the bullion banks um, yeah they're at it again it's such a important part of the system that um, that's what they do unfortunately but they won't be able to keep doing it forever because they will run out of physical because we're going to keep stacking. Uh, we've got all the time in the world to stack. Uh, currencies, uh, we've got uh, sterling down about 0.2 of a percent at 141.50. The euro is down about the same at 121.90. Uh, the dollar is up 0.2 versus the yen at 109.79. Yeah, the dollar is up slightly. <laughs> Not a reason for gold to be down half a percent, though. Uh, dollar uh, you want is up an eighth at 639.12. So, yeah, the dollar has uh, recovered a bit. It has taken a few days uh, ever since the People's Bank of China raised the reserve requirement ratio. I think it was from 5% to 7%. It's the first time they did that in about 15 years, I think. So, uh, Aussie dollar, where are we in terms of the Aussie dollar? We're, well, we're down a bit today, down a third of a percent at 77.26. Uh, WTI crude trading near the high of the year, I would say. We're at uh, 69.06, up half a percent. So looking good, still crude. Uh, high grade copper is unchanged, around 459. And uh, the 10 year yield is uh, unchanged just below 160. So there you go. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel uh, if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Facebook, Twitter, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.